Hi, everybody. Welcome to Pace Studio on the Road. My name is Brad Wagner, and we're live at the Pilgrimage Festival in Franklin, Tennessee right now with Marissa Armas. Marissa, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah, so we are going to dive in and talk a little bit about her country, how the women of country music became the success they were never supposed to be. Um, this book is out in the world right now, and um, I have gotten a chance to dive in to really dig in over the last hour or so and, <laughs> and, and become more familiar with it. I'm really happy that the book's author, you, are in front of us right now and can and can maybe illustrate a little bit to our audience what's what this is all about and what's in here yeah so th yeah thanks for having me um, her country came out in May and it's really the story of a group of three trailblazing women in country music uh, Casey Musgraves Marin Morris and Mickey Guyton um, but kind of so many more women in the circle and beyond. So the chicks, Miranda Lambert, um, Allison Russell, Brandy Carlisle, and paints this whole picture of how to survive in a genre that is engineered really for women to fail. Um, it does not occur, you know, country music is not an environment that really nurtures um, success for its female artists on terrestrial country radio. So this is women that have gone really outside the boundaries of those lines and had careers that don't really, uh, aren't really how you're supposed to do things in Nashville, but you know, we all, we all know who Casey Musgraves is now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's, um, a microcosm of what I think a lot, the way the economy is in general, that women are not, not fairly paid are more easily terminated from jobs that, that happens in general. What, what was it to you about this particular story that, that inspired you to, to dig in and spend, I would imagine, you know, years of your life, uh, digging in and really telling the story. Yeah. Um, I moved to Nashville about 11 years ago. Uh, and I had other, I had covered mostly other kinds of music, but definitely some country. And uh, as soon as I moved here and started covering these stories, um, I kind of noticed immediately that there was this environment where you weren't supposed to say anything that deviated from um, the norm, anything that was not polite, anything that was political, anything that was kind of questioning the powers that be or the boys club. You were supposed to play the game, be nice. And I didn't really like that. I don't like playing the game and being nice. Yeah, um, good, good, good for you. That, <laughs> that resonates I mean, with me a but lot. but I just, you know. Um, and I started to kind of dig deeper. And at the same time, I realized that the women that, or actually the country music I like to listen to the most, just happened to be women. Um, Casey, Marin, um, the chicks, women from the 90s. Um, and even sometimes you can, while not women, sort of in a similar category, someone like a Jason Isbell, Sergio Simpson, country adjacent people that you don't hear on country radio either. And I certainly wasn't hearing these women on country radio. Um, I don't listen to country radio a ton, but I didn't see them on festival bills either. Um, they played here at Pil Pilgrimage, but at most, yeah. you know, country festivals, like sort of traditional country festivals, it's all mostly white men nonstop. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that pop country vibe has there's nothing, nothing wrong with it, but it's never really resonated much with me and many of the artists who you just mentioned very much do resonate with me. Um, who are you particularly excited about right now? I mean, I know Brandy, obviously yeah, that's, that's the yeah. answer. That's the correct answer. Is Brandy I mean, Carlisle. it's always good to be excited about Brandy and yeah. always the right posture to be excited about Brandy. Um, and I've seen her a million times and see her again tonight, but um, so many people I think in her orbit, are really wonderful too, like Allison Russell, like Celise, who just played here at Pilgrimage. Um, there was a showcase earlier today called Black Opry that was all uh, black country and roots artists. That Yasmin, was just, Yasmin Williams. Yasmin Williams was yeah. there. Uh, it was really, really incredible. Uh, Aaron Vance, and um, yeah, just sort of showing the breadth of, of country music. And there's, there's a lot to be excited about right now. Yeah, yeah, I concur. There's. Um who was it? I forget. I forget who wrote this song, but it was uh, the good old days. Was the vibe of the song like the, these are the new good old days? Where mm -hmm. it's, it's sometimes, I think, tempting to think of what it was like in the 1970s and romanticize that thing. And yeah, it was rad then, but it is rad right now. We're right in the middle of something. Yeah, I mean, it's sometimes when you're in Nashville and you write about country artists, you can get really discouraged and you can focus on the really terrible stuff. Uh, but then you can, we just had Americana Festival, and I was just out at another festival called the Park City Song Summit, and, yeah. you know, it was just a couple feet away from Jason Isbell singing for, you know, by himself for almost two hours, I think, and just, you can just 
be blown away by the talent. And uh, I kind of choose to stay in that space of being blown away by the talent, although it can be really easily, you know, you can, you can go down a black hole of being pissed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you choose to. I don't know why you would choose to do that, but, you know, yeah. I, I feel that, like, that sort of urge to, to grumble about things sometimes and, yeah. you know, go for it and go through that You need black to, hole, like, curmudge. Yeah. Being a curmudgeon every once in a while. Yeah, I mean, I just turned that. Yeah. 40. I feel like I can, I can do some grumping. Yeah, that's fine. I think you've <laughs> earned that right once you're 40. Sure. You can, you can lean into curmudgeon, but as long as it doesn't keep you from you know, enjoying what is actually good yeah. out there. Yeah, there is so much of it. Um, when in writing this book, how far back did you go in time in order to tell tell stories, like parallel stories of uh, of how country music is set up, particularly to exclude women and to and to promote good looking white men to the top of the thing? Yeah, um, this book is primarily about the past twenty years. Um, and I intentionally did that because one, I wanted to sort of give readers a sense that this is a story still very much in progress. Um, so it stops right up at the current day or whenever the current day was when I handed in my manuscript. Uh, and, you know, we think of the women of country music and I think we think of Dolly, Dolly Parton, Loretta Lynn, Kitty Wells, uh, Patsy Cline. And I think those women are pretty well documented. I mean, you can run into a Dolly Parton book, like, you know, there's probably one right over there. Um, there's a lot of Dolly Parton books. And so I really wanted to kind of focus on the past 20 years and doing a modern country music story. Also because I feel like those are, you know, that kind of approach, especially in something like country music that is sort of based around the traditional, um, is kind of missing. We don't have books about um, what's going on right now and, and why it's relevant to our culture and our political climate. And that's sort of the type of book I wanted to write. Does that time frame coincide with you coming down to Nashville? Was that when, when you were drawn to, to move down here? Uh, I moved to Nashville right um, at the end of 2011. So my time in Nashville coincides pretty strongly with when Casey, Marin and Mickey actually moved to Nashville. Um, and so I was on the ground reporting before Casey and Marin and Mickey even had record deals here um, in Nashville. So m I was able to pull from kind of that experience of seeing Marin, you know, on a tiny little crappy stage somewhere and seeing Casey at the basement, this little club in Nashville. And um, that was really helpful to be able to kind of be on the ground uh, watching the whole thing happen in real time. Yeah. What is, what is your day-to-day -day outside of the time that you spent writing this book? I know you're with Rolling Stone. You're with, I imagine, other outlets as well. But it's, I mean, I don't know. What is uh, What does your day look like? How frequently are you out there at the small clubs getting beer spilled on you and watching, <laughs> watching uh, t tiny artists emerge? Yeah, uh, I mean, as much as I can be. Um, my day-to-day -day is I'm a freelance journalist, so I write a lot for Rolling Stone, uh, LA Times, doing stuff for Vulture these days, kind of anywhere um, that fits in whatever with whatever I'm writing. Um, and I work a pretty structured day. I don't know if a lot of writers do that, but I definitely try to get out and see as much, you know, up and coming music as I can. Um, of course, then I'm Brandi Carlisle comes to town. I'm going to go yeah. see her, but I'm always going to come for the opening act. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you have? What do you have coming up in the near future in terms of show? I'm just going to leave through this while we while we chat. These are um, <laughs> always straight to the middle. To the are we cut to the me camera right now? There's some nice pictures. Show show the the internet some of some of what's in here. Yeah, we have little Sally Mickey Guyton in. there. There's Miranda. Um, that's Marin. That is a long ass time ago when she had this kind of angular cropped hairdo thing. Am I doing it right? <laughs> uh, rehearsing in Brooklyn, a bunch of uh, ones of Casey and her friends from back in the day. Um, are these all? Are these yours or some of these? They're all a, a mix of photos I got from people that were in the book. We have Margot Price. Shout out to Margot Price up there. Nice. Uh, there's Casey with my son. My son is sitting on Casey's <laughs> lap at uh, Grimey's in Nashville. Nice. Actually, He's doing great right now, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's Brandy. I have a couple of Brandy um, in RCA Studio A, where she made, uh, by the way, I Forgive You, and In These Silent Days, and the High Women record. And yeah. I think that is probably from the High Women Sessions. Yeah. 
with Dave Cobb. Nice. Yeah, um, that was one of the most most epic things that I saw. It, uh, it was Newport Folk. I think it was the last Newport before pandemic, or maybe it was, I don't remember, maybe yeah, it was the first one after pandemic, but yeah, that High Women show was outstanding. Amazing, yeah. That then is Cheryl Crow came out, and then Dolly Parton came out. Crazy, yeah. 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 That's a, uh, there's a whole, almost a whole chapter on on Newport, and when the High Women came out at Newport. And also, oh, dude, there, uh, there yeah, it is, right there. Right there, Newport. Yeah. Uh, you have Jason Isbell and Amanda Shires and their little daughter, Mercy. Yeah. Um, and our Native Daughters, who are also a super group. Yeah, and with played Allison. It. Allison Russell, Layla McCalla, Amethyst Kia, and Rhiannon Giddens. Yeah. And uh, they played also at the same Newport as the High Women. And, you know, kind of the big news story was the High Women were this big super group coming in and, and creating this huge stir at Newport, which is not untrue. It was amazing, but also here you have our native daughters, you know, kind of singing you the story of the, you know, the black tradition of roots music and, uh, you know, also an extremely important moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there you have Mickey at the Ryman kind of, uh, and then Brittany, who's, I think just about to be on today, Brittany Spencer, Brittany Spencer's today. Yeah. Oh, I well, didn't know that s- this Sweet. weekend at some point. I yeah. Don't know. For some reason, I think I thought she was tomorrow, but could yeah. be today. I don't, I don't know, know what my name is most days, but yeah, Brittany Spencer is, uh, you know, kind of one of the next generation of up and coming country stars, um, who's just incredible and uh, country needs to make room for, for people like Britney Spencer. Yeah. 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 And so I'm mean, the chapter that I just happen to be open to right now, where my gaze at <laughs> is, uh, I mean, the topic t- tackling the topic of sexual identity inside of country music mm-hmm. is, I mean, I'm sure still taboo to a certain extent, but probably not as rough as it would have been 20, 30, 40 years ago. Um, yeah. How? What? What is the the gist of of this chapter in the book? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's certainly changing. Um, but we meet kind of earlier in the book, uh, Shelley Wright, who is an artist, a uh, mainstream country artist, who um, had some hits at the end of the 90s. And then, you know, she was in the closet and she didn't come out as a lesbian until 2010, I think. And, you know, kind of made a career outside of the mainstream frame. But that chapter is uh, kind of all about Casey and Follow Your Arrow and how she was really um, kind of dedicated to not just, you know, cultivating a queer fan base, but really um, being inclusive in her music and her shows and who she writes with. So, you know, she wrote Follow Your Arrow, this song, um, that was, I guess, kind of banned from country radio, and she wrote it with Shane McAnally and, uh, and Brandy Clark, who are both queer songwriters themselves, and, uh, and she made sure to platform them. So she, when she won, a, won awards for the, that song, she took them on stage. So she was really aware of the fact that, like, you know, she had to do more than just be a straight woman up there singing about, you know, it seems so silly and tried to even say that that lyric of the song was, like, controversial, you know, it's kiss lots of girls if that's what you're into you know it's so mild like it could mean anything but um that was you know controversial for country music well i mean i very much like everything about the vibe of doing your own thing and trying to trying to you know succeed on your own terms especially when things are stacked against you i mean i've I've been a straight white dude my entire life and it's challenging enough just to even (laughs) get out of bed and do normal stuff you know it's it's (laughs) tough you know and um i uh am very happy that you have written this book and uh and amplified the the successes that that these women have had and i really appreciate you coming and talking with us here today oh thanks for having me yeah see you out there brandy carlo yeah Yeah. outstanding